Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, webinar, Skillsoft webinar, Why Personalised Coaching is Essential for Leaders to Stay Ahead. Uh, my name is Dave Lovell, and I will be a moderator for today. Um, I'd like to thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. Uh, we really hope that you find today's session useful. Uh, before we get started, can I encourage you to please ask questions throughout the session? Uh, to ask a question, you can use the Q&A facility uh, just at the bottom of your screen there, uh, and there will be a dedicated time at Q&A for the end, but just send the questions in uh, throughout the session at any time. That'd be great. So a reminder that today's session is being recorded. Um, we will make a, a copy of the recording available after the session. And with all that covered off, it's my pleasure to introduce our presenter for today. Now, you may have seen in our um, in our advertised scheduling, we had Russian uh, Mogha uh, down to present. Unfortunately, she's unable to uh, be with us today due, due to unforeseen circumstances, but I'm very excited that we have um, Josh Pesnell uh, with us today. Uh, he's Skillsoft Senior Director of Product Leadership and Business. Uh, and Josh has spent over 15 years coaching sales teams, developing global sales strategy, leading cross-functional teams, and facilitating organizational innovation for um, organizations of the likes of Amazon, Zooks, and, um, and Zillow. Bit of a mouthful, those ones. Um, Josh actually leans on his previous career directing large-scale musicals um, to identify what each employee, much like an actor, needs to perform their role uh, and believes that his role and, and the role of learning professionals everywhere is to point people in the right direction, provide them with enough motivation and give them the resources that they need to be successful. So with that, Josh, I'll hand the webinar over to you. Wow, Dave, thank you for that introduction. It's kind of, it's always uh, difficult to hear a biography of yourself and hear all the things you've accomplished uh, or you think that you've accomplished that aren't that big of a deal, but thanks so much. And I'm super excited to be here. I'm sorry, I'm not Rosham. I know Rosham has uh, an equally much more impressive career, but I would love to share some things today that, you know, I know that Rosham would have shared, but also some things that in my own personal experience, having worked at Amazon, launching Alexa globally, uh, Zillow and real estate, hospitality, autonomous vehicles, and now leading Skillsoft's uh, leadership and business portfolio with Rosham. I'm super excited to spend some time with you and talk about it. It's the second time I've said super as well. Hey, but before I actually put up the PowerPoint, I'd love to ask everyone to take a moment and I want to ask you a question. And yes, there will be a recording and we will be able to share it later, I believe. But I want to take a moment and ask you to reflect on something right now, sitting how you are right now in your seat or standing or watching. And I want you to think about one role model, one person you learned from in your past. This person could be a real person, or they could be a character, uh, an imaginary role model. And I want you to think of whoever that role model is, who would best represent how you feel right now today in the moment. And if you would, would you please share in the chat where you know that character, that person, that role model from, whether imaginary or real. And I, I'll share mine while y'alls are coming in. But for me, the one role model I think of in the person is my grandfather, but I know him from my childhood. I know him from growing up. I know him from uh, doing stuff around the house and with my family. So that's my role model. And that's where I know him from. I don't see anyone else submitting anything yet, but I think the point I'm trying to make is everyone's unique. Everyone's different. Each of you have learned different things throughout your lives in different places. Right, trust the process, that's great. Thank you, Tanya. And so when we talk about personalized coaching, I think one thing I wanna think about is what is personalized coaching? Why do we care? And then how can we sort of put that into play, not just tomorrow, but actually today? Or how are we already putting it into play? So let me go ahead and bring this up. I hope everyone can see, uh, I'll skip through this slide, but, and I'm using a deck here that Rosham uh, created as well. But I think when we really think about coaching, we need to think about why do we need coaching? 
as an organization, we want coaching because we want our businesses to thrive. And if we just look at the, tri there's a lot on here, but if we just look at the triangle, our organizations are built on people, process, and technology. And those are the things we're constantly adapting to in some way, shape, or form. Now, what do we want our people to do? What are we trying to, as learning leaders, what are we trying to accomplish? Well, Rasham and I talk to people all the time. And what we're hearing is stuff like diversity initiatives. We want them to have diverse thinking. We want them to hire diverse teams. Customer centricity, customer obsession, it was called at Amazon. We want people to stop thinking just about who, uh, who we're selling to and think about that end customer. And finally, this whole digital transformation thing, which I don't sometimes know what it is, but it's the biggest cog there. It's the biggest thing we're working on in this new normal that we have uh, approached. And if you look at all, all of those cogs, they all change the process and they also can change the technology. But, but actually this pyramid should be upside down because all of it affects our people even the processes, even the technology. And the people are the only fi completely finite resource we have. And so we, we talk about culture and we talk about innovation and we talk about agility and all of these things we're trying to achieve, but what they really come down to when we talk about them from organizations and wanting to be able to future-proof ourselves is that we need all of our people to be leaders. We need all of our people to take all of this stuff and to be able to execute on it, not just in a maybe I understand it way, but in an actual practical way. And, and this isn't just nice stuff to have or good things for L&D to focus on. This is actually money that we're losing. These, this is no surprise to many of you, but I think it's worth reiterating. Because of bad leadership, we have up to a 30% talent turnover. And this is solely just because of the leadership part. That can lead to an 8% annual loss. Just think about that. We can reclaim 8% of our revenue simply by fixing leadership. It can also generate 3 to 4% improvement in customer satisfaction, which by the way, customer obsession, customer centricity, these are things we keep talking about. And I think this is super interesting. Better leadership practices also lead to better processes. They lead to five to 10% more productivity. And as much as we're updating technology, sometimes we have so much technology and we use amazing technology on our phones all day long. But when it comes to using a database or, or a customer relationship management software or something or our learning management systems at our at our offices and in our organizations, we run into problems. And so how do we transform employees into leaders? How do we make every leader a virtuous cycle, every employee a cycle of leadership? This is why Rasham often talks about transformative leadership and Skillsoft's transformative leadership program. And what's what I love about this is that it's built on the ADCAR model. And for many of you who are familiar with change management, change management uses the ADCAR model. And we use this because we have to change people. We have to change their mindsets, not the people, excuse me. We need to change people's mindsets. And we need to do that in a way that allows them to also help our organizations and lead others. So I wanna walk you through what, how we think about leadership and our, on our leadership program here. And then I wanna hone in on where personalized coaching gets in. So first we're talking about awareness and desire in ADCAR. And this usually happens in the first three months of a new role or when you join an organization. And this is where having Skillsoft and our library and our essentials library becomes important or having a library of some sort, right? So that you can really provide something so folks can become aware of what they have. After that, folks have a good foundation. Now it's knowledge. I need to start filling in the holes. I need to start connecting the links. And when we have, and for us, we have stuff like our senior, uh, 
our Skillsoft Leadership Development Program and, and partnering specifically with MIT Sloan Management Review to develop a digital leadership self-assessment. So you can specifically say, here's the knowledge and the gaps that I have, and then I can go out and get and fill those gaps. I can build that leadership knowledge. And this is all great. We're a few months in. Now we really need this rubber to hit the road. We need everything to come together and to start applying. If I'm using my theater background, we need to come out of rehearsals and we need to get on stage. And this is where Pluma really comes in. Pluma is our scalable coaching platform that allows coaching as a service, so to speak, that allows individualized coaching for almost every employee in our organization, if we could afford it. But what it really lets us do is open up the possibility and integrate coaching into our entire ecosystem. And so when I start on Pluma and I start with my coach, I start with a 360 degree assessment, which by the way, is something you might be able to create for your own employees or use the digital leadership self-assessment or benchmarks, which we just launched in order to create a, a, your own sort of assessment. But we start at Pluma with a 360 assessment. So the coaches understand where you start today. And we're going to, by the way, at the end, go back and measure where you went to. That's why we're going to be able to show success. And what we do through Pluma in conjunction with the information is you have someone now able to sort of take everything, jump in specifically and say, here's not just the information you need. Here's how you can help apply it. And I can reflect with that and do that over and over and over again through uh, an app. Now I go on and I get to reinforcement. So this is where that end 360 degree assessment comes in. And now I'm ready to sort of take things to the next level, unless I, it, by the way, I can always continue my coaching engagement. And then this entire process starts over in a way. But this is where Skillsoft provides Aspire journeys. And soon we'll have other products that are going to meet this need as well. And so we can sharpen what we have already developed in our coaching with these Aspire journeys, with these leaders. And if I can add one more complexity to this, which becomes really, really interesting, once someone goes through this, they can begin to peer coach others and they begin to take that process. And now you have a scalable solution that takes advantage of your existing management hierarchies. Now, I want to move on and talk more specifically about Pluma, but I just want to pause and make sure I see a question in the uh, in the chat. Oh, just David, uh, welcoming everyone. Thanks. So, what is Pluma, and what do we mean when we say scalable executive quality coaching for leaders at every level? Well, Pluma has sourced and works with and vetted 350 certified coaches who they have in their network. And I wanna be clear, cause I've been in this business for 15, 20 years, and we've all worked with organizations that can contract out and work with folks. These are individuals who have actually worked in industries and have now continued to take the information they learned and the education they've garnered. In, in many cases, having PhDs are published in HBR, and now they wanna give back and they want to do it with a organization they trust and who they know are gonna serve up clients and customers who are gonna be receptive to what they have to offer. And so with those coaches, we, off, we offer an integrated methodology based on the 360 peer assessment and feedback. This doesn't mean we tell them what to do. It means that they're not flying around just choosing any old thing. We're, they're working within a construct and a construct that frankly, you as the customer uh, can make sure is within your needs. Then we have one-on-one -on -one interaction with certified co coaches through a systematic cadence. And, and this is where things get great because we're coaching it, because it's in an app, because we're measuring what happens before and after, you can see results at scale and start to see how the coaching is affecting your organization. You don't just have to trust that the investment in executive coaching at the highest level uh, is there. And you don't have to go around and find the one executive coach on LinkedIn who you think is great and then source them directly. We have pre-vetted those for you and you can use them for anyone in your organization who needs it. And so in that way, it's also customizable to your organization's leadership values, to what you need. There's nothing that is cookie cutter here. 
And, and finally, you're getting the enterprise dashboards and the analytics so you can see how this all links in. And in the future, when we begin to integrate our platforms like Percipio with Pluma, and we're already integrating all of our content with Pluma, we're gonna start to see a, a larger ability to take all of this research, all of that data, and either serve it back to you so you can make decisions or help you make better decisions about who needs to learn what and how that trickles down to the people or in what ways having a top-notch coaching engagement um, you know, might be useful. But I wanna be clear, right? Not everyone can afford this executive level coaching. This isn't an AI, these are human beings. And so there's still a cost with that. But you have personalized coaching at your fingertips right now. That is every single individual in your entire organization. So you don't have to necessarily hire coaches. You can start to train and teach your, co your, your leaders, which are every employee, whether they're managed or not, how to be coaches and how to coach each other and how to own being leaders for the business. This is an example of uh, our, well, these are the competencies taught in our senior leadership, uh, sorry, in our Skillsop Leadership Development Program, which we created in conjunction with MIT SMR. What you can see is not only a wide selection of choices here so that you can make sure that it aligns with what you need in your organization. We have 10 that we generally recommend for folks who are new to leadership, new to managing. But you notice these aren't scalable uh, we're not saying managing yourself, managing your team, managing business. This is leading all of those things. And so while you can work through leading yourself, leading others, leading leaders, we create this in such a way that all this information can be taught. And then once one person goes through it, a manager can have that huddle, can take documents, can take application resources off of SLDP and then begin to apply that with their teams. In that way, we have coaching right now. And because we mentioned diversity and because we're mentioning digital transformation, I just wanted to provide a sneak peek into some content that we've either already released or are releasing, including a, a, continued, um, a continued additional look at DEI, at our diversity and inclusion uh, and equity, sort of everything around that uh, courses, which we, we spent a lot of time and effort creating some products that are already out there. I highly recommend you go out and look at them. And I know for Rasham, it is something that is very important to her and something we will continue to focus on. We've also begun focusing on some hybrid workforce courses. We know that people might not be going back to an only remote or an only office setting. And so we begin to look at how do you lead teams in that hybrid workplace? How do you build relationships in this sort of new inside outside sale world where maybe there's a hybrid of that? And finally, our Aspire journeys, which are a role-based journeys that we put together using, uh, in partnership with Burning Glass Technologies. They're an organization that goes out onto the internet and goes and talks to experts all over the world and scrapes for data and figures out what are the most in-demand skills and what are the most in-demand jobs right now. And we partner with them then to take those, build out custom journeys that you can take that take you from point A to point B on a guided learning journey to get your start in one of these career paths. So those are some of the things that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, and I think what I'll, I'll close with, and then I, what I would love to do is ask some, some questions uh, or, or get into some questions is when you think about that person who had that biggest effect on you and where you met them and where you knew them from, I want you to ask yourself, was that in a formal learning environment? And was that thing you learned that they taught you really in a book or on a page or in a book? Now, it was certainly something that had been digested through one of those means. But it was the act of taking that, of someone taking that information, working with you, sharing it with you in such a way, saying it in such a way that suddenly makes it all click. And then suddenly, all the information, all the books that seemed so foreign, all the concepts that you just couldn't make it through a video on suddenly begin to become clearer. And so when we think about personalized coaching, I also want to think about leadership and how now it's not just about what we can teach and what L&D can bring as far as content. It's about the value and the results we can bring. And that 
can only be measured by and with the help of leaders at every level of the organization. And there's no reason why tomorrow or even when you leave this webinar right now, you can't do something to begin coaching yourself and others. And I highly recommend you go out and look at our content out on Percipio or some of it's available. Uh, you know, some of our DEI content is also available for free as well. Um, and so I highly recommend you look at that and share it with someone. That is a coaching act. And so with that, I'll pause um, and I'll, well, I'll say thank you, first of all. And I think maybe I sped through a lot of stuff, but I'll take a glass of water here and maybe some questions are beginning to come in because I know we still have some time to share together. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, we've got uh, questions starting to come in. Um, the first question that we've got that's landed, and, and um, while we're doing that, if you've got questions, please do continue to send them in. We've got uh, plenty of time to, to cover those off and to dive into this topic in a little bit more detail through your questions. Um, but the first question we've got is, is I guess, a, a probably a good place to start. It's a fairly broad one, and, and I know this is something that a lot of um, organizations struggle with in terms of if you've got a very large organization, how do you identify who to start training? Who, who do you um, who, who do you identify to participate in the training is the question that's come in. Um, so I'll, I'll yeah. throw that one to you, Josh, and see what you um, what you think. Yeah, you know, what, where do I start? <laughs> who do I start with? How do I choose which group perhaps that I need to hit with? And also, how do I not get stuck perhaps in the cycle of trying to find the perfect solution? I, I think there are, I'll tell you different ways to approach it and then I'll provide my personal opinion. And then I can also provide Rashim's opinion actually. I think starting anywhere is a good place to start. <laughs> Even an email out to employees is always a great place to start. Now multipliers, if we start at the, the top, we would hope that it would continue to trickle down and everything we wanted and all the coaching just normally happens. And sometimes people are very busy and we don't have, that doesn't happen in reality. And so I would say one of the places that I always like to start is with first time leaders and middle managers, the folks who generally are in the thick of it, sometimes are taking on IC work themselves, sometimes are struggling to delegate and work through their people and are potentially the most vulnerable to burnout. So as a result, personally, I usually start with first time managers when it comes to who to start with in attacking problems and middle management. Now, if we're talking about executive coaching at a corporate pluma level, that's where I like to look at it. Usually my second line, like my high potentials are the ones that I'm going to focus on and put the executive resources in for those coaching, because I know I want them to stay around in the organization and I know I don't want to lose them. And right now we all know talent is hard to come by. Good talent is hard to come by. Great talent is even more difficult to come by. And we all don't want to, we don't want to lose that phenomenal talent we have. And so the best way to retain that talent is to invest in that talent by showing them, not that I just, uh, showing them that I don't just care by giving them content that isn't customized to them personally, but by taking the time to listen to them. This is why in a lot of leadership programs, we'll generally start with managers and talking about one-on-ones, right? Because it's an easy multiplier. But for the executive coaching, I always say start on the high potentials right? Or the folks who are going to stick around, are going to bring value to your company and are the ones you want to have set the bar. And then when you're talking about leadership in general, the first time in the middle managers and personalized coaching, I think in general from, from other managers, right? Because you'll get a, a quicker output, wider spread as well. I think that makes a lot of sense. If you can pick those where you can have increased um benefit from the coaching it makes a lot of sense and that leads us to this next question which we talked a lot around coaching right um the question we've got is when you say coaching what is your definition of coaching because there's different yeah. different um definitions out there yeah i think i think at its core 
we are taking what L&D has wanted to do at scale for a long time. And what we're really talking about when we say coaching is a one-on-one -on -one relationship and the ability to help someone reflect and find the answers on their own and be able to guide someone to the resources they need in order to achieve the goals that they might not yet know they need to achieve. And so if that sounds very cyclical, I think it's because it requires someone who asks a lot of questions or a tool that requires a lot of questions or technology that allows folks to ask themselves and forces them to ask themselves what they are really trying to achieve and then can provide direction to that. So I think coaching can be applied by almost anyone. Parents are coaches, uh, are role models or coaches, we get coaching sometimes watching something on television, but a coach, right? A, a, someone who is only a coach or he, who solely or who coaches a lot or who takes that role responsibly, right? That is what they are good at. That is the only thing they do. And so they're not coaching as part of something that as part of something they coach because they're really great at coaching. I think about Ted Lasso, which is a, this TV show here in the United States, where you have a soccer coach and a, a, a football coach, right? And then an American football coach, or maybe Australian football coach, either way. But the point is, he knows how to coach. And that's what he leans on, is that the skills of getting people to perform on the day at the role is, I think, what we're talking about when we talk about coaching. And then we're talking about, I think we are hiding, or I think what's underneath are these different levels of what a coach is. And so I think when we talk about Pluma, we're talking about an executive coach, that one-on-one -on -one coach who that is their job is to only coach. I also think leaders are coaches, right? That's why we talk about leaders as coach. I, I hope I'm a coach to my uh, child, although frankly, they coach me more often than not. So I'm pleased to say Joshua, be pleased to have the, the Ted Lasso reference um, resonates with this region. So it's been a big success globally. So You've you've got that one there. That's um, <laughs> good. That's, that's excellent. The the uh, the next question I've got that's just come through is is around. I guess um, do you have coaching around specific job roles? So I, I, I'm and I'm, I'm guessing by that they mean you know sort of technical roles versus non technical roles. I, I'll leave that to you to to sort of answer. Yeah, I think there's a few ways that I would look at this. One is there are going to be some similarities upon, you know, on any role. Now at certain levels, there's specialties that have, and for instance, you might not want someone who's built a career in fat in the fashion design industry. You might not feel like you can relate as a coach to those people who are, uh, I don't know, might be in a completely the bowling industry or the, the football industry. Right. So you might not think they can relate. I think in some cases, there are those phenomenal people who do relate. But I think at the core is, where are the coaches? And the good news is, they, we have 350 coaches at Pluma who have all sorts of experience from all sorts of different backgrounds, from automotive to ballroom dancing, right, to, to finance, to technology. Uh, so I think that finding someone or a coach who can relate that is something we can, you know, that, that we definitely provide. I think that we have in Percipio and around our content, specific journeys that can help you, guide you to the specific role you want and can fill in some of the holes of what is the specific knowledge I need to get, right? Because if I'm learning to drive a vehicle versus I'm learning to fly an airplane, there will be some similarities in behaviors but I have to know how to turn. They're going to be different in some very core fundamental things. And that information, right, it's probably not going to translate well. Uh, and so I think when you take the one and you take the other, then the question is, how specific are we getting? And so I think if it's like, I need a coach, basically an apprentice for an electrician, right? Now we're talking about something completely different. Now, if I need to coach someone, and generally you're not going to invest in a coach for that, right? But if I need to coach someone to, for instance, take on the role of being a technical product manager, and they have for a long time been an engineer, those skills can be very different. Sales, 
if I have been a phenomenal sales professional and now I'm moving into being a sales leader, those can feel like very different things. So what I need is someone from the sales industry, someone from the engineering background who can help me bridge that gap, who can point me to the resources I need, and who can help me basically find those resources myself. And I think that we can provide. Because I, I, I want to point out too, we're talking about personalized coaching and some people want to approach it like here is the path I need, start at A, go to B. Other people want to be dropped, you know, in the middle of the woods with a compass and a, and a map and say, I'll see you in four hours if I don't make it out. You know, here's the emergency thing. And then other people want a good variation in between. And so it's very expensive to provide that personalized coaching to everyone. And so in lieu of doing that, right, we try to find the person with the most experience. And we have coaches who come from all sorts of industries. We continue to invest in all of these role-specific content. And then we count on continuing to match those people uh, with the best people, which, which is, by the way, and I don't know, I think I, I missed some of this in my, in one of my decks, but which, ha which is why Pluma has a 90% rate success, uh, success rate, right? Because people get that sort of personalized co coaching they want. So anyway, I hope that addressed the question and thank you for it. Thanks a lot. Um, for the moment, we've got one more question um, to cover off. So unless any others come in, um, the question we've got is, is, will there be a demo of Pluma? And I don't know that we're in a position to demo Pluma today, but perhaps you could suggest um, how someone might inquire about demoing for Pluma or, or what we can you know, provide in that space. Yeah, I, I cannot demo Pluma today. What I will, uh, and I can't, and we don't have an integration to demo either. Um, what I would suggest is reaching out to, you know, either reaching out to us and I can put up our contact information here in just a bit so that someone can get you access, walk you through a demo and show you what it is um, and how it looks. That being said, you know, the platform, the, the way it's served up, the information, that is all wonderful. And the value of Pluma is also the fact that we have access to these coaches in a way that we can sort of um, provide that in a, in a variable coaching as a service way. Yeah, so Chris has, <laughs> um, how do you, how do you do great coaching when the organization you work for doesn't give enough space for leaders to coach? And are you opening up a, a, a huge topic here that I think we could have a few pints over? Um, I don't know what time it is there. It is definitely past my time for some sort of beverage. I, I would say a few things. One is, you, if you, uh, one is if you are in a room full of stairs and you're on a bicycle, right? I'm never going to make it from one end to the other. So in some cases, we have structural things that are impeding. And that, it sounds like if we're saying leaders aren't giving us space to coach, maybe there are structural issues. That being said, I'm sure no one wants that to be the case. And so Another way we might reframe this to say, how do I make time in the limited time I have to coach? And there I would suggest a leap of faith. Um, and the reason I would say a leap of faith is because I, I think the, when we say we don't have enough time to coach, what we are sort of admitting is there is so much to do that I don't have the time or capacity to help others perform and or they don't have the time to take it on. There's a, a, there's a bunch of things there. And what I might say is, is there a way to release power or to, to experiment for yourself in some small way that is low risk that will allow, because coaching, and I think the risk of coaching, if we say it, right, or of letting someone, is to let someone fail. And you want to be there to sort of point them and help them. And that can take a lot of time. Once we get through that though, the individual can now actually perform things sometimes better than we were able to because they might be really good at it. And so the way I would say, how do, how do I get to great coaching is, A, I can't control what's outside of me. I can control my little group. And so I can coach them. 
And so the things I've done in my space is to say, how do I make time to make sure I'm talking about every employee? Because I believe that everyone on my team and everyone around me needs to be talking about how they are developing their careers more than the work. I think the, I personally believe the work will get done and that's how I manage my team and I'm able to trust in that. I think when we're thinking about the core root of the issue, there's a trust issue either from leadership, from my team, from others around me. And so the easiest way I would take that first step is simply to say, um, how can I release a little bit of control in order to let someone fall and fail and scrape their knee so then they can get back up, do it again, do it better. And then I don't have to do it anymore. Might be one question or one way to do it. The other way is always data. Any data I can provide, I find is, is the main change agent for everything. It's why sales teams are so, I love working with sales so much is because there's always a result and a number at the end of it and you can't hide from it. And so any way that I can quantify data for a leader to show them that there is an issue um, and to show them there could be a return on investment, sometimes that suggests that they make space. And that can either be through the old sales method of sort of saying, where's the most pain and how can I drill into that pain? So for instance, a quick survey that shows a lot of people you know, feel a certain way. And so maybe if we invested in them, let's do a little experiment and let's invest in some coaching in a certain amount of time. Would we see attrition start to drop? Would those people start to go higher? Maybe there are little experiments we can run and show iterative changes in data. I, I also know for a fact, you can probably reach out and we, you know, and, and the proof of coaching, there's numbers behind it. So that's not the issue. The issue, right, is making sure that you can get people within your organization to believe that those numbers will work there. And so I also think that's where we could probably help if you reach out to someone on, you know, if you have a partner at Skillsoft to help you think about how we can do that, right? Um, Brett was saying leaders sometimes have trouble coaching because they cannot move into coaching mode where they park their agenda and don't need to know the answer. That, yep, yeah, and they move mostly, into, yeah. And Brett, you know what I want to, you mentioned this about theater when I came on, Dave, because um, I spent a lot of time in, in the theater. And so I want to reflect to everyone, the performer performing Phantom of the Opera, <laughs> five years into the run, walking through the same spots on stage with the chandelier falling at the same exact time and every word exactly the same is an employee. They're having to fill all of that controlled things around them with something authentic, which I think is what you call acting. What we are trying to get our people to do is perform a role, right, at their jobs. And I think if we think about things like that, it's about, I think, to what you were saying, Brett, how do I get them to perform the role? Because in the end, I go away. I'm not performing fan anymore. They have to keep doing it. Now, the difference is they don't have, you know, actors are fortunate. They get to know where to go, what to say. They just have to fill in all the stuff. But what's interesting there is that filling in is what makes it the authenticity. It's the engagement that, that, that part, right? The part that I think coaching grabs. And if you switch that around and we start looking at from the employee who's performing a role and we start thinking about you directing that play, we would never say like, walk here, do this, do it like this, put your hand like this, this way, because we know it would look fake. And so the whole idea of that is how do I get someone to honestly do that all day, every day? And so I think to me, that's what real coach, maybe it's another way to say that's what coaching is. It's directing a musical. Awesome, I love that analogy. Um, also love that in the opera, so it works quite well, really. Um, the, the next question we've got is uh, in terms of what is served up through the Pluma platform? So I guess that's moving on from coaching. What's in the platform itself? In the platform, you're going to start with the 360 degree assessment, which would be in the Pluma platform. And then similar to other apps that are out there where you can chat back and forth or you're arranging times with someone, it's logging your progress 
and it's making sure that it's putting sort of a vessel around the experience. So if you have six engagements, for instance, we can see where things are progressing and it's making sure we're logging that so someone can see it. So it's not just happening in a vacuum with some executive coach. We're also serving up, uh, there's a library of content that Plumo also serves up uh, that the coaches can recommend. And that is somewhat what keeps everyone within a similar language. So that way, if you are working with Pluma coaches and everyone goes back to their, to their offices or back to their virtual offices, not everyone's speaking the same language. But the mechanisms of the working of it wouldn't be too much different from other standard mobile apps that you've dealt with that have a chat feature or have sort of these scheduling features or have the ability to serve up information. Um, and again, I am limited because I don't think Dave shared this. I am hitting week, uh, sorry, month three here at Skillsoft. And so I have not, I have not had the opportunity to delve into the Pluma app as much as I would like, but I know we have an entire team and that's all they do. So I'm not trying to tap dance off the question, but that is, that's, uh, I hope that answers it or answers it to the best of my ability. Thanks, Josh. So that brings us to the end of our, our questions. I guess before we finish up, Josh, did you have any final remarks that you um, you wanted to make? Coaching is sounds big and it can be as big as we want. It can also be small. And so perhaps what I would do is end this with a moment of self-coaching. And so I will simply ask you if you have a, you can either think about it, if you wanna force yourself, go ahead and take a piece of paper. But I'll just ask you a couple, a few questions very quickly. And we can see the power of perhaps coaching even when I don't have a coach. So how everyone can get personalized coaching, get the coach in your head. My first question is, what it, it what should you be doing today that you aren't doing what should you be doing today that you aren't doing what's keeping you from doing it What's really keeping you from doing it? What's one thing you can do right now or right when you leave here to change that or to move that needle? What else? Will you do it, something in the 15 minutes that you'll get back from not having to be here through the first whole hour? And if so, what will it be? I really appreciated everyone for joining me and I hope this was useful and I look forward to seeing you at more webinars or perhaps at a show of Fan of the Opera or at a Ted Lasso showing, who knows? Brilliant. Thank you, Josh. Well, I um, was challenged by that last bit in, uh, in a way I wasn't expecting to on today's webinar. So thank you very much. Thank you everyone for, for joining us. Uh, I really hope that you found it useful. If you do have any further questions, you can reach out to Josh or myself or to your Skillsoft representative. And I should say again, thank you, Josh, for stepping in and, and filling in for Russian. We really do appreciate it. I hope everyone has a, a good day and um, that's it from us. Goodbye. <laughs>